reading this book, A People's History of the United States, I get the impression that you think that the nation has never been a democracy. Why didn't it ever become a democracy? No, it's never been a democracy. It's, it's been more democratic than a lot of other countries in the world. You know, you know we have the, the, the uh, uh, you might say, the, the machinery of democracy. We have, you know, the structure. We have voting. We have uh, representative government. But it, w it was never a democracy. and never intended to be a democracy, really, uh, because it was founded by a small group of people who wanted independence from England. You know, the famous people, the founding fathers, Washington, Jefferson, Madison, Benjamin Franklin, etc. Rich white men. Rich white men. They were the ones who made the Constitution. Uh, they were, were the ones, uh, and, and there's a motive for them. Uh, the motive was not democracy. The motive was to have more democracy than England, which was a monarchy, which is a kingdom. And so they had a certain amount of, you know, representative government. Yeah, but remember, when they set up the Constitution, the United States Senate was not elected by the people. It was elected by the, by the state legislatures. The uh, president was not elected by popular vote. It was elected by the, the electoral college. Supreme Court justices appointed by the president. But the important thing to note is that when they set up this Constitution, their aim was not democracy, their aim was strength. Their aim was a strong central government. And the reason they wanted a strong central government is they were worried about rebellion. Because the year before the Constitution was adopted, uh, there had been rebellions all over the country. This was after the Revolution. And, and poor people, farmers, many of them veterans of the Revolutionary War, found themselves oppressed by the taxes and the, the homes were taken away, the farms taken away from them because they couldn't pay their taxes. And so there were rebellions in western Massachusetts and New Jersey, South Carolina, all over. And th these rebellions frightened the leaders, the new leaders of the government, the founding fathers, so that when they got together in, in Philadelphia in 1787, the year after these rebellions, what was on their mind was, how do we have a government strong enough to prevent rebellions? The southern states wanted to make sure they could prevent rebellions of slaves. The people in the, the industry, the, you know, the rich people in the north wanted to make sure they could stop rebellions of farmers. And so that was the idea of the Constitution. That was the new government. Uh, and um, essentially, the government was in the hands of rich people, and it has remained in the hands of rich people all the way yeah, through. So with such a starting point, it could never be good then, really? No, un unless, there were, unless there were popular rebellions that forced the government to change, and that has happened at certain times. Uh, it, it happened in the anti-slavery movement. There was a, po it was a national anti-slavery movement that f pushed Lincoln and Congress into enacting laws to end slavery. But yeah, there are certain times in American history when this undemocratic government has been forced to become democratic. And, you know, uh, after all, this, this so-called democratic government maintained racial segregation. Not just the South, the federal government, the national government maintained racial segregation, uh, supported the South. Uh, and uh, it took a popular uprising in the South with sympathy from around the country to change that. In the 1930s, of course, uh, you had the Depression, you had economic crisis, you had turmoil all over the country, you had strikes, you had general strikes in San Francisco and Minneapolis, and Franklin D. Roosevelt facing this turmoil, a rebellion all over the country, um, he made changes which were helpful to people. So the system remains undemocratic, but it can respond to popular rebellion. Uh, and of course, the problem for the future is, will that popular rebellion no longer just deal with superficial things, uh, changing this law and that law a little bit, stop this war? Will that rebellion become 
strong enough to fundamentally change a revolution the direction then. of the country. A revolution, but not the typical, not the standard revolution where an armed force seizes power in the capital. No, a, a grassroots revolution in which people, a decentralized revolution, where people all over the country, uh, you might say, uh, organize and, and uh, they take control of, the, of their local governments, and where workers uh, take control of the industry. But could that happen peacefully? Uh, well, it could happen without a great deal of violence if you have enough people organized. When you have enough people organized, you don't need violence. And uh, violence is, is the recourse of people who don't have the numbers. Uh, peop when you don't have a mass movement uh, and you want to bring about change, you get desperate and you get violent. But if, if you have enough people organized, then uh, the powers of government and of the corporations, they can't do anything about it. They're helpless. Tend that toil where one reposes, but a sharing of life's glories.